Eli Lilly is trying to convince investors today that it can withstand the billions of dollars that it's set to lose in the coming years. Top drugs are facing generic competition. It may be a tough sell. Bloomberg Shannon Pettypiece is standing by with Eli Lilly's CEO, John Lichtleiter, and she is live from the company's Investor Day right here in New York. Shannon. Hi, good morning, Deirdre and John. Thank you so much for joining me out here this morning. Now, you put out some numbers before your investor day. Uh, you do not expect revenue to fall between 20, uh, less than $3 billion over the next few years to about $20 billion, but you're losing $7 billion worth of revenue from generic competition. How are you going to stem these losses, prevent yourself from losing more of that revenue? Shannon, we're pleased to be able to reaffirm our midterm guidance. So we're saying in this challenging period we've got between now and 2014, where we lose several of our patents, uh, we don't expect our revenue to fall below $20 billion. So that's a, a floor or a, a minimum threshold. Our net income to fall below $3 billion and our operating cash flow to be at least $4 billion each year during this period. That means we'll be able to maintain our dividend, operate the business, make capital investments, et cetera. Now, we lose uh, the $7 billion. We're going to make up a substantial portion of that through three growth engines that we have. Japan, where we're leading, uh, we're the leading company in terms of growth right now, emerging markets, including China and our animal health business. In addition, we have the inline products, our currently marketed products, and some new line extensions coming from those, as well as revenue from products that we've recently licensed. For example, Trigenta, the new oral diabetes medicine we just launched with Beringer Ingelheim. So that's going to be the message today. We want to provide a little more definition about how we're going to meet these goals and then be prepared to launch new products as we come out of this period. Now, you mentioned emerging markets, and a lot of drug makers are focusing there, but that's a tough area. Those are some uncertain markets. They've got a lot of pricing pressure. Uh, why are you confident that emerging markets are going to help you recoup all this revenue? I think our confidence is based on the fact that these emerging markets are going to be the fastest growing economies in the world in the next 10 years. And yet they're all different. So we're focused very clearly on six key emerging markets, starting with, with China. Uh, China is now the, the, the number three country in the world in terms of the size of the pharmaceutical market. Later this decade, they'll become number two. As and China's economy grows, they're going to demand more and more health care, including modern medicine. But can you make a profit there? Because you've got to sell your drugs for a lot less in China. We think we can. Uh, first of all, the Chinese are as interested in quality medicines as we are here uh, in the United States. I think Lilly's built uh, a very good name for itself uh, in China. And the prevalent diseases in China are, are starting to look a lot like the most prevalent diseases here. Uh, cancer, uh, psychiatric illness, diabetes. And these are the areas that Lilly excels in. Uh, stepping back, looking bigger picture at the industry, you want to think that immigration reform is essential to growing the U.S. pharmaceutical industry. Why is that so important, John? We've got so many unemployed scientists in the U.S., it seems. Why do we need immigration reform? Shannon, here's the situation. Lilly and a lot of other companies go to the best American graduate schools to recruit the best scientists coming out of those programs. It turns out today many of those scientists are not U.S. residents. All we want to do is be able to hire and recruit these people with a high likelihood that they're going to be able to stay here in the United States where oftentimes they want to stay. The alternative is they go back to their countries, build businesses to compete against us. So, so the important thing here, I think, is to give these folks, from whether they're from China or from India, the same kind of opportunity that many, many others had to start and build businesses here that will then hire American, hire American scientists and, and help grow our economy at the same time. So you don't think that's going to cost American jobs if we make it easier for foreign scientists to work here? Absolutely not. There was a study done a couple of years ago that show a significant portion of startup companies here were started by an immigrant founder. So let's grow these new companies, let's employ Americans, let's not have these folks go back overseas and build companies that compete against us. That's a job killer. Now, another thing you're lobbying in Washington for is tax reform. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of tax incentives to the pharmaceutical industry already. Why do you think we need more? What do you hope to see? Well, I think across all industries, I think there's fairly broad agreement that our tax system is really out of step and not competitive with the corporate tax systems of other developed and developing countries. Our tax rate is among the highest in the world, and we, and we don't have what's called a territorial tax system where you pay tax 
only on the earnings where you earn them. So those are the two key arguments we're making. Let's get a competitive rate. Let's go to a territorial system. We'd also like to see a more competitive R&D tax credit. While we have one in this country, again, it's not competitive with the R&D tax credits that are available to us and other companies in many countries outside the U.S. Uh, there's been talk of a tax holiday repatriating capital from overseas. Is that something you would take advantage of, bringing in money from overseas? And how much money do you have overseas now? Well, we have a significant amount of our retained earnings overseas. That's the nature of our business. We, we earn the money there. We bring it back here because we don't have a territorial tax system. It get, gets taxed, okay? So if there were a tax holiday, and we would favor that if it was part of overall tax reform, uh, we certainly uh, would uh, take advantage of that opportunity to bring the money back and invest it here in this country.